Going back to one of your rituals, I was just thinking about this. You said you write, can't give up now yep. on your shoes before you, before you go out to play a game. And I was, I was thinking like, what is that? You know, 18 years is a long time to dedicate professionally. And then what to speak of all the prep and, and everything else that goes into right. it. But what does it feel like to get traded, to feel down and out, to feel like it's not going in the direction you want and then to can't give up now. Yeah. Like I find that that kind of pivot, for some people it breaks them and for some people it makes them. And for you, any sort of pivots have only taken you further and further and further for you to perform and pursue at a higher level. What is that? Because I think people look at you and even when I read your book, I was just thinking, you're working really hard at basketball. You're really working hard at your family. You're working hard at being a dad. I'm like, this guy works hard on every area of his life. Like there's not- so you Try to. You're yeah. trying to, yeah. I, I respect that. I, you, you don't come across as you're perfecting it, but there's this energy of like, I'm thinking about how I'm raising my kids. I'm thinking about my family relationship. But then when the career part is having its hiccups and slip ups and whatever else in the past, what did you find when you get that can't give up now? Like, where does that come from? So I'll tell you where that came from was when I got traded from Houston to OKC, like to be, I, I was mad, like really mad because I had been told one thing and another thing happened. And when I went to Houston, I, we moved like 15 people to Houston, right? So to not know and to know that I was going to Oklahoma City, I was hot. I was in Augusta, Georgia and... I didn't know what that meant, right? I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what was next. It was the first time I'd been blindsided with something like that. There's a song by Mary Mary, right? It's called uh, Can't Give Up Now. Cause like I said in the book, I grew up in church. I was in church four or five days a week. And I remember listening to that song and like getting emotional. And it was like, look, the trade didn't happen. The ESPN, everybody talking about it or whatnot. I learned this a while ago in the league is that ain't nobody gonna feel sorry for you. And like you said, I've learned that too in this business that there's two different type of people. People who are going to feel bad for themselves and just sulk. And then there's other people who are going to get to work. And so that was, my, that was my mindset. It was like, all right, I think I'm done. All right, cool. I got I put my head down and do the work. Yeah. And so that was, you know, my whole energy going into that. Yeah. How, how do you differentiate between what the media is building as a narrative versus your narrative. Like how do you, I find like athletes, that's what makes the athlete's job a million times harder than even playing the game. Yeah. Because especially now with social media where there's so much chatter, so much conversation. How do you keep your focus around this is reality and that's just that's noise? It's crazy you said that because I learned something about myself um, even a few years ago. I can't have that clutter, right? And when I played back in LA, I think I said this in the book too, with the Clippers, Doc Rivers, he used to talk about uh, getting rid of the clutter, right? So when you get home from a game, if your team lose, everybody that's with your family and all that, what they gonna do? If y'all lost the game, what they gonna say? Yeah, uh, hope you're it okay. It was everybody else's oh, fault, right? Right. Like if you lose a game and you get <laughs> home, everybody in your family, gonna, they're gonna be like, uh, this person wasn't doing that, that person wasn't doing that. They ain't never gonna say nothing about you. Mm. Right? And so that's literally clutter, right? And the same thing I've learned years ago in the playoffs, like in the playoffs, you got to win four games out of seven, right? And I don't care what anybody says about social media or whatnot, but if you win a game in the playoffs and you go on the social media and you had a great game and everybody talking about you like you the best thing since pants with pockets, then you might let your guard down. Right, And the same thing, if you don't have a good game and you go out there and everybody's talking about how sorry you are, you might lose a little bit of confidence. So for me, I try to block out all of that noise. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's like when the playoffs start, I don't want to see what ESPN talking about. I don't want to see what Bleacher, I don't want to see what none of them talking about because you got to just stay locked in and stay focused. And as long as you know what's true, you know what I mean? Yeah. People are always going to say something. Always, they're gonna try to have some type of narrative or whatnot, but as long as you know what's real, I think that's what can help you keep your sanity. Yeah, and I think that's one of the hardest skills for anyone, let alone someone who a lot of people in the world are talking about. Like that's, you know, I can imagine that affects kids today. I'm sure kids feel it at school and you see that with them at school. Like, and see, this is the thing I tell you, and I'm not a 
parent, coach, anything like no, that. No, no. I can only tell you my experience, but what I've learned with social media with kids, right, and having a 13 and a 10-year-old is that when I was growing up, if a girl didn't like you or something like that, you dealt with it at school, right? Once you went home, you didn't have to deal with it, right? You, you just saw her at school the next day. Now with phones and social media and all that, one thing I know is that these kids are dealing with things all day long, right? It could be on Snapchat. It could be on Instagram or whatnot. And if our, us as adults, if we can't handle that mental capacity, like I said, I can't handle that. Like I'm on Instagram, but I'll go weeks without even looking at it. You know what I mean? Just because I feel like, you know, with our stories and stuff like that now, we ask people how, how they doing. We already know what the hell they done did for the last three weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. that's just me. Yeah.